This is Twit. Verizon Wireless, which sells cell phone service to about 123 million subscribers, has been inserting a string of about 50 letters and numbers and characters that it calls unique identifier headers into the web traffic of its customers and the websites they visit for the past two years, which, as you can imagine, goes against some privacy tools like do not track settings and private browsing sessions. Verizon spokeswoman Deborah Lewis says that there's no way to turn it off, that the company doesn't use the UIDH to create customer profiles. And if you opt out of the company's relevant mobile advertising program, then Verizon and its partners won't be using it to create Create targeted ads. But since Verizon is broadcasting this identifier to every website, ad networks could start using it to build a profile of your activity without your consent. Wired quotes Jacob Hoffman Andrews, who is a technologist with the Electronic Frontier Foundation and critic of this practice, who says, quote, ISPs are trusted connectors of users and they shouldn't be modifying our traffic on its way to the internet. He calls this perma cookies because they can be read by any web server that you visit and use to build a profile of your internet habits. It looks like recent leaks of Fitbit's newest wearables were the real deal as the company has officially launched three new models. The Fitbit Charge, an accelerometer equipped band with an OLED display and seven days, seven good days of battery life on a full charge, of course, that'll be available in November as a successor to the Fitbit Force for $130. The Charge HR is basically the same, plus an optical heart rate monitor, five days of battery life if the Charge HR is monitoring heart rate continuously. That'll go for $150. And the Fitbit Surge, a fitness smartwatch with a capacitive touch LCD display, side buttons, built-in GPS, the ability to get caller ID and text messages from a connected phone. It's kind of the... It's the mother of the Fitbit wearables. The Surge is also water resistant and like the Charge HR, will continuously track heart rate. Won't be available until early 2015 though, but will cost $250. But look out Fitbit, you might be the market leader, but Lenovo apparently has its own SmartBand SWB100. Now I say apparently because the company hasn't officially announced anything, but the product did appear on Lenovo's website with an explainer the Lenovo Smart Band is for young people who take care of their personal health and are interested in new tech trend products. It'll also track steps, distance traveled, calories burned, heart rate, and keep tabs on your sleep habits. The Smart Band can also automatically unlock your PC when you bring the device near it. That is pretty cool. No word on price or availability. Again, it wasn't an official announcement, but it does look like it'll sync with both Android and iOS apps and come in orange or blue. Amazon announced a new HDMI streaming device today called the Fire TV Stick, which is now available for pre-order. Amazon is offering Prime members or people who sign up for Prime special pricing on the stick, $19 for two days. So we're into the first 48 hours after which it will retail for $39. Now, unlike Google's Chromecast, Amazon's Fire TV Stick doesn't require another device to use it. It comes with a remote and most of the functionality of the $99 Fire TV box. Users can also use a free Android app on their phone to search for content with their voice and Amazon says an app for iOS is in the works as well. Non-gaming apps that are written for Fire TV will automatically work on the Fire TV stick, which is also run, running on a, a version of Android. Amazon also confirmed support for HBO Go on the Fire TV before the end of December and the Fire TV stick getting HBO Go in 2015. Everybody wants the HBO Go app. It is the hot ticket. Twitter's third quarter earnings are in and here's... The bad news first. The company's very important user growth rate seems to be slowing. Active users rose 23% to 284 million compared with 24% growth in the prior period. So that's kind of going the wrong way. Sales were up though. In fact, they more than doubled to $361.3 million. But Twitter's third quarter net loss is also up to $175.5 million or 29 cents a share from $64.6 million or 48 cents a year earlier. Mobile advertising was 85% of total ad revenue in the third quarter and international revenue more than doubled to $121 million, making up 34% of total sales. All that said, Twitter shares fell as much as 12% in extended trading, although the company's stock has risen 59% from a low point back at the end of May, which may indicate that confidence in user growth is recovering.
Good news if you're a Microsoft Office 365 subscriber. The company is removing your storage limits for OneDrive. Now, that's if you're an Office 365 home, personal, or university subscriber. Then you've got unlimited storage. It's pretty cool. Microsoft is currently rolling out its changes to every account in the next couple of months. And if you're already a subscriber, you can opt in to be upgraded early over at Microsoft's OneDrive preview site. Now, this clearly puts a lot of pressure on competitors like Google and Dropbox and others that offer online storage to offer their own unlimited storage tiers. Neither company, Google or Dropbox, has announced changes as of yet. However, Microsoft Dropbox or <laughs> Dropbox did respond to Microsoft after Microsoft's initial one terabyte of OneDrive space, which it announced a few months ago. So, you know, let's see if Dropbox responds again. In other pricing news, on November 2nd, the Xbox One's starting price will be $350, which is $50 less than its current price, and will apply to System Plus game bundles as well. For example, the Connect Free Assassin's Creed or Sunset Overdrive bundle will cost $350. Call of Duty Advanced Warfare would run you $450. Microsoft says the lower prices will be available until at least January 3rd, and if enough units are sold, the price may remain in place throughout 2015. This price cut also puts the Xbox One under the PlayStation 4 in price for the very first time.